Oh, uh, I get so many questions about you know growing an Instagram, about making money as a creator, growing as a creator in general. I'm just open that first. Uh, that wouldn't warrant a whole video by itself. So today, I thought. Hold on for a second. Oh, this is too much. Oh no, <laughs> it's always too much. It always looks not so much and then, oh no. We're gonna get special today, answering some of your questions, I guess. Let me just put this here. Yeah, roll the intro that we don't have. <laughs> Make an intro in turn, a great one. Mm. Welcome back, Dominators. <laughs> yeah, this is a little bit of a different one because I figured we just have to sit down a little bit and uh, talk about some stuff about Instagram, about me personally, things that you guys have asked for, like I just said, things that wouldn't necessarily warrant a whole video. So right now, I'm just taking the time to sit down and answer uh, one of, why am I twitching so hard? I should go on to Twitch. <laughs> so first of all, one question I get so many times is, why did they block you regarding your bio? <laughs> Or why did the chancellor block you? And people who don't know what this means. Actually, if you go to my bio, which I have to change on Instagram, it says blocked by Austria's chancellor. Don't ask. Here's the thing. Uh, it's not the chancellor anymore, but I got blocked by Sebastian Kurz. Let me just check. He's not chancellor anymore. Yeah, I'm still... Nonetheless, I'm still blocked. I can't find him. And uh, some putting something in like this that sort of sparks curiosity. Already starting to make sense. Uh, that sort of sparks curiosity for people is a good thing. Something that I teach in my in my program, The Black File. People see this and they're like, "What's happening?" They DM me a lot of the times asking why, especially because I put in "Don't ask." And uh, this is actually a true story. One day, it's actually a stupid story. <laughs> Tell you how it is. Because you have to know, on Austria, all the shops, all the grocery stores, everything is closed on a Sunday. On Sundays, which is weird if you ask me. But there's like one or two that are open inside Vienna. So I went there and I noticed some some products being locked off, like toothpaste, noodles. Pesto and just stuff like this, just stuff like and toilet paper, I think. Stuff like this that you just need on a Sunday, usually. That's what I think. So I went there with my friend. I should have filmed this, by the way. Went there with my friend and I tried to go behind the barrier and take some baby toothpaste. <laughs> Just because I wanted to see what did what do they do? You know, why can't I buy some baby toothpaste on a Sunday? Just because it's the rules. So I went downstairs to the cash thing. She looked at me. I said, you know, it's my small daughter. I have her with me <laughs> and she needs toothpaste. She forgot her toothpaste. Her teeth are already black because it's been a while. She just looked at me, took this. I'm not kidding. You can ask my friend OMG Flow. She threw the toothpaste down on the floor and said, this is illegal. This is not allowed to be sold on a Sunday. I was like. What the fuck is going on? So I uh, told people on Instagram what's going on. You know, what a stupid sh bullshit is going on in this country. And then I was like, thanks. And tagged the chancellor of, of Austria asking him what stupidity is going on. Apparently this was enough to uh, warrant a block from his site or from his team's site. It's already been some years ago. But interesting to see nonetheless. You know, slide critique warrants a block. Cancel culture. You know, way to go, people. Hi, Instagram keeps blocking my account, telling me that they notice an unusual activity. Fifth account now. Okay, my friend, this has various reasons why this could happen, or at least the biggest reason is your trust score is really low, meaning every account on Instagram gets a certain score, telling the algorithm, well, this might be a spammer or this person might be abusing our, our systems and stuff like this. Usually these are tied to, you know, the actions that you make. For example, you do follow and follow or do spam and DM people. And uh, yeah, Instagram doesn't like that and loves to block. Give you action blocks. Usually if an action block occurs, you also get like a shadow ban. They, you know, cut down your reach, for example. But sometimes you don't even get an action block. You still get cut down by your reach. Now, if that happens all the time, if you create new Instagram accounts, well, they're onto you. You must have done something wrong. You know, sometimes it's really, you can't do anything about it, but uh, usually it's because Instagram knows and recognizes your device ID, meaning the phone that you use or the Wi-Fi that you create these accounts with. Or if you create some uh, Instagram accounts with your computer, also very bad, they just have really you know good, good countermeasures in place because there's so many spammers abusing the platform. Sometimes it also has a lot to do with Wi-Fi networks that you join. 
You know, let's say you go to your friend who's a hacker and a spammer, and he has 50 Instagram accounts running through, you know, via his Wi-Fi, abusing everything, and you log in there too. Well, you probably have a flag as well. So really be careful. How to make money with a thousand followers? Well, there's a million possibilities to make money with a thousand followers. It depends. Are these 1,000 followers your fans? Are they just random people? Are they bots? Are they fake profiles? Obviously not. But if they're real people, uh, you've probably heard about this uh, theory, the 1,000 true fans. You just need 1,000 true fans to actually make it. And I even go as far nowadays to say, well, you just need 100 true fans in order to make a decent sized income from your social media. Talking about true fans, you could sell services, you could sell pro digital products, you could sell, you know, if you are an ex expert or anything in that regard, you could sell a course or you know coaching or consulting. Uh, you could start an agency. This is how I started out. Um, you can do affiliate marketing. You know, basically there's no, there's no border. I tell you how it is. It's easier if you have less followers to have a product that you know, yields more money, you know, i.e. a product that gets you 500 bucks per sale or a thousand bucks per sale. Obviously you're gonna have to find something that creates value for your audience that your audience is willing to pay for, for example, a thousand bucks. But yeah, there's definitely possibilities. The internet is a wild place, a big place, a weird place. And you're gonna find some people who need exactly what you know, what you what, what value you can offer for, you know, them. So yeah. How did it all begin? Somebody asks. Yeah, I don't even remember myself. I just remember I worked at a law firm because I was studying law at the time. Kind of was sick of this whole thing. <laughs> Plus I wanted to, I didn't want to be stuck in one country, you know, because if you study law, obviously, it's kind of hard to leave the country, you know, in terms of finding jobs and stuff like this. So, yeah, and I always was creative. Back when I was a kid, I used to make videos, After Effects and Premiere Pro and stuff like this. I started with Premiere Pro with before the CS came out. So, just so you know how old I actually am. But yeah, I wanted to become an influencer because that was kind of like the cool thing that people thought, well, you could travel, you, you get stuff for free, products for free. So I was like, yeah, this is sort of my, my goal that I want to achieve in the next few years. And I was like, okay, Instagram, interesting too, because I like photography, I like, uh, you know, presenting myself, but not too much, you know? So I started an Instagram and um, yeah, things started to happen. I figured everything out by myself, you know, at first I just, nothing worked obviously. Then I started seeing patterns. I started dissecting the algorithms, you know, rest is pretty much history. <laughs> you know, it worked out for me. Then we were like, okay, let's start an agency an Instagram agency helping other people do that, you know, with various growth hacks, with uh, strategies and, you know, with content strategies and always trying to be one step ahead of, you know, the Instagram algorithm back at the time. Um, yeah, which worked really well. And then one day I just decided to start a YouTube, uh, YouTube account. I didn't tell anything of anybody about it, not my business partner, who's still my business partner, by the way, not my family. Cause there was some other person asking, do you ever feel shy to make content on Instagram because your friends and rel relatives are following you? Well, I used to be, this is why I didn't tell anybody about my Instagram back in the days, Yeah, you know, uh, and about my YouTube. In fact, I only started talking about my YouTube channel uh, to friends when I passed a thousand subscribers, which was a lot you know, months later, five, six, seven months later. So yeah, I did feel shy back in the days. Uh, I was insecure, probably. That's what it was. I, I was kind of shy to show, open myself to you know, have other people, especially the ones that I know, see how I open myself up to strangers on the internet, talking to a camera kind of weird it was weird at that time now it's kind of second nature for me and now i have achieved my my goals doing exactly that so no i'm not shy anymore you know if people don't like it you know obviously that that's okay too it's their opinion but yeah it doesn't change the fact that um i've built my life as i wanted to so yeah somebody asked how can someone with no knowledge experience become an entrepreneur well this is the great thing about social media. You don't necessarily, when you start, have to have lots of experience or lots of knowledge. You can just document. This is what Gary Vee used to say, or he still says it. I don't follow him anymore, unfortunately, because it's just too much, <laughs> too much content. But uh, yeah, you can just document. You just can't go out there, start an Instagram or YouTube, wherever. You know, basically there's no limits to whatever platform you want to be on and say, well, here's the thing. This is wh who I am. This is my goal. 
and I'm just trying this out and I'm gonna take you along the journey and share my findings and share whatever that comes up on this journey. And that way, just because you, you know, put yourself out there, just because you share your experiences, you will get experience. Plus you will actually get social proof kind of in the community that's people that start to watch you and you can grow from there. Basically, this is what we all did. <laughs> uh, this is what we all still do. There's so many things I have no idea about, but I'm still trying to continually trying to learn more and trying to figure out more. And you know, whenever something comes up, I'm gonna share it with you, obviously. So yeah. Caesar of Poland. Maybe this is Cesari, who I recognize from all the live streams. Actually, because I think this guy's from Poland. But yeah, uh, tell us the reason behind why you named your page on Instagram and YouTube. Hey, Dominic, you mean? Well, the name. Well, my name's Dominic, right? And uh, back in the days, back in the MySpace days. But yeah, my first username on MySpace was Tigerman in 2005 or 6 ish. <laughs> with an I as a 1 and with a A as a 4. You know, with an underscore, because that was the cool thing. And I was like, yeah, I need to change it somehow. And people always said to me, hey, Dominic, obviously. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to change it to hey, Dominic. That's it. It's a whole story. I've had this username since 2006 then, or seven. Chris says, favorite sex position. Well, it's the four times inverted springing hamster. Is it possible to make a living from Instagram with 40,000 followers? Yeah, it is possible. But here's the thing. Those numbers don't mean jack shit. If you have 40,000 followers, depends on your niche, depends on your content strategy, depends on how your audience actually is invested in you, depends on your products, depends on so many factors. You know, the only thing that's important to know is those numbers ne don't necessarily mean, yes, 40,000 followers, I can make a living. No 40,000 followers, I can't make a living. For example, on um, YouTube, when I had, I think, two or 3,000 followers or 4,000 subscribers, I made a full-time income, you know? Granted, and here's the other thing, full-time income means different things for different countries. I was in Austria, so I regarded this full-time income as about $1,500 or euros back then. Because this is how much you earn in, uh, as a minimum thing, I guess, here, if you go to work full time. So, yeah, very po very much possible. But I know lots of people who have a million Instagram followers or a million YouTube subscribers even who don't even make that. So, yeah, it's just uh, so many factors come into play. Mostly the systems that you set up. If you set your brand, your personal brand, for example, up as a business, if you treat it like a business, and then you streamline certain processes and, you know, set up sales funnels and your products most importantly yeah definitely doable yeah the only thing you know right now that i'm thinking right now lots of people think well on instagram i have the followers and i just become a brand ambassador but with forty thousand followers just becoming you know getting those brand deals and stuff like this i don't think you can make a living from that so but it's not the best way to make money anyway because you're dependent on all those weird companies those ugh. Ah, I, I'm not doing brand deals anymore for years, uh, almost, uh, on Instagram, not at all, obviously. And on YouTube, almost not at all, too, because brands are just hard to deal with. And I'm just a free bird. Well done, Zalvi, 28. How to make a lower third like in your video. You mean all the, the these things that are jumping back and forth here in my YouTube channel? I usually make them myself. It's a, you know, and this is kind of why I don't want to hire an editor because I I just innov innovate you know I just think about new things to spice up my videos and you know then I have new content ideas based on the effects that I make yeah it sounds weird but that's how it is but mostly I make them myself usually stock plugins on uh, Final Cut Pro I just try to make them look cool sometimes I use After Effects even though it takes a lot of time to make these things uh, and you know sometimes I take templates and presets that I usually get from uh, motionarray.com your marketplace for creators. It's the best thing ever. Hashtag not sponsored for this video, but um, I guess I'm an ambassador or something like this. So yeah, I can definitely recommend Motion Array to have some great things. But like I said, not sponsored and I don't even have a link for them. So yeah, but if you guys want me to make a video on how I cut my videos or the effects or any of those things, just let me down below in the comments and I will make a video about that. How do you feel, man? Man? <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm actually feeling okay. <laughs> I 
I'm feeling good, actually. I, I have to feel good. You know, just looking, obviously the whole situation around the world is kind of a pain in the ass. It's kind of hard. It's harder for other people, I guess, than for me, just cause I sort of have I'm my own boss and decide whether where I want to go. And you know, if country A, Austria, <laughs> pisses me off, I just leave, which I'm gonna do until, you know, for a few months. Goodbye, beautiful studio. This is what, it makes me hurt the most but uh, yeah obviously other people have it way worse you know they are tied to a job or tied to somebody and they can't leave and they have to kind of do things that they don't necessarily want just because they think they get more freedom or think because they can get buy better and then they figure out well didn't happen at the end <laughs> just, just getting worse and worse so yes in that sense i can't complain at all in fact i'm more than grateful for the things that i've i've built for myself to enjoy the freedom that I have. But then again, maybe this whole thing is sort of a wake up call for, you know, other people who are still tight, for example, to a job or, you know, to something uh, to maybe, you know, the, the safe route that people always told me to go, you know, finish my law school and stuff like this. Not saying it's wrong, not at all, you know, to each their own, definitely. But, you know, maybe, my super unsafe way that I went for, you know, growing my social media, building a brand out of my person was not the unsafest way. I'm talking about future proof and stuff like this. So yeah, maybe it's a wake up call to finally start. And one year you're gonna thank me for that probably, you know, if you keep doing it. What drugs do you recommend for creativity? What do you think Instagram will be like in two years? Well, this is a very hard and interesting question. I answered it a few months ago on, on my Instagram, I guess. But there's there's a few possibilities. Either Instagram will be the number one social media platform, you know, because things are changing so fast with the short form content coming and going. and We don't really know what's happening. Could be that it's the number one hub for uh, creators because there's so many possibilities and it's integrated in the metaverse now. Or it's just losing and losing more steam. It's getting kind of complicated to grow with so many uncertainty factors with the algorithm having weird quirks and stuff like this could be that people just get fed up at one day and uh, they're like well let's just you know stay on TikTok and YouTube because for example I think YouTube will be there for the next 10 years as the number one long form content you know even though they have shorts shorts but uh, the long form thing I think this will always be one of the most important things as well. With Instagram, we'll see. Uh, but right now, I think the trend is actually upwards, a little bit upwards, so yeah. Don't you think Instagram marketing is saturated? Instagram marketing, what do you mean exactly? To make, to create, a, create Instagram marketing strategies for other people, help other people with Instagram marketing, or Instagram as a general, as a marketing tool? I don't think, you know, it's gotten a lot more saturated than it was, for example, five years ago. I have to give you that. So it might be harder for certain people to grow in certain niches. But then again, it's easier because with so many new people flooding in, it seems like everybody's just doing the same. So if you're just a little special, if you just have the personality or a little different personality or it's just something, your content quality or just something that sticks in people's minds, you're going to have it easier than ever just because there's so many uh, copycats out there some so many lemmings out there doing the same thing so just standing out a little bit i think it's better than it used to be years ago uh, to be honest so yeah at first you looked like fake and <laughs> instaguru doing shady stuff i love shady stuff actually but uh now you seem to be credible yo <laughs> i love great to hear yeah i actually hate those Fake guru. I hate gurus in general, but I, most of them are fake. So I'm trying to be the exact opposite. Sometimes, and this is another thing I'm sort of you know, having an issue with, sometimes it could seem a little bit shady. You know, I'm always constantly trying in my marketing strategy, constantly trying to balance this whole thing and trying to get some data. What works best? You know, for example, uh, does a sort of shady looking sales page convert better than this nice, you know, cleaned up, not at all shady looking sales page. Unfortunately, right now the numbers are clear. Shady, old, weird marketer, gimmicky sales pages and uh, opt-in pages still seem to be doing a lot better than the ones that, that feel honest. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. I'm still trying to find a balance for that. If you want me to talk about this a little more, just let me know in the comments as well. Any return to Ukraine soon? Yeah, actually on Tuesday. 
I don't know when I'll be back in Austria. I, I don't know about the videos. I'm gonna hire the studio where we were last time too again for videos. But yeah, I'll, I'll stay there for a few weeks. So if you guys want to have a Dominator meetup, just let me know. There's always some people asking to meet in Kiev, by the way, Kiev. Nastrovia. Fuck business, here's the most important one. Where did you get the fuck you, Woody? I don't have it with me right now. Well, but I actually have it with me right now. This is the worst version, but um, yeah, I have a better one too. I've been planning to you know, have a merch drop, just a very limited drop of this you know, fuck you hoodie, mostly because it actually has some benefits. If you want to, you know, set some statement like I do without pissing the algorithms off, because we know on Instagram, the algorithm recognizes this word and will give you less reach. I have data on that actually, but with this, people still know what you want to say, <laughs> uh, but the algorithm most likely doesn't most likely. But uh, yeah, I'm going to make a limited merch drop, something nice, you know, I don't know, 50 people or something like this with some personal thing soon, I guess. Been putting that off off for uh, about a year, <laughs> but we'll do it, you know, also because I want to just document, you know, all the process and just show you what goes behind a you know, drop on social media. I sent you a DM with my experience with your workbook about reels, Julian Brest. Let me just check that out, Julian Brest. Okay, what's up? Hey brother, a few days ago, I downloaded your workbook about for reels, the reels challenge. Link is down below. What? 739 mil? I think that means thousand in your language. I could see that this kind of reels was working. Oh, I could see that this kind of reel or can replicate it. My reel got 27K likes and still growing a lot. I'm very happy with the result. I'm going to keep working following yourselves because I saw that they really work. From Argentina. Well, awesome. Awesome, brother. Happy to hear. Keep crushing it. Oh, yeah, keep crushing it. If you have more questions, just drop them down below in the comment section. Also, submit your accounts if you want to be featured in the next account review. You're probably not going to make a live one, but just a regular one. And don't forget to watch the Reels Challenge and start the Reels Challenge. As you can see, lots of people get great results using that. And this is what's, what really, this is what warms my heart. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.